This is a biology lesson outside the classroom. Schoolgirls from Loreto College are on a field trip to the Ilo Zegret, Egret Island. Most of what grows and lives here is unique to Mauritius, but the great white egrets are long gone. The Mauritius Wildlife Foundation maintains a dozen nature reserves throughout the country. Diane Laboucherie is an eco-ranger for the NGO. Today she's guiding the girls on a nature trail. The theme of, of uh, our tour here, it's exactly let us go back in time and that's my role. But for learning with nature, it's more to help Mauritian people, the locals, to know more about the endemic species. So this is where people will definitely find both endemic uh, plants and animals completely free. More than 60 species, most of them endemic like this rare olive white eye, are at home here. The girls get worksheets and exercises. And they regularly encounter animals that have resettled in their former habitats. Mauritian society is gradually gaining awareness. The Learning with Nature program is consistently acquiring more converts. This is the reason most of the primeval forests have disappeared from Mauritius, sugarcane plantations. Together with the textile trade, they sustain the country's economy. After nearly 500 years of settlement, the country now has only 5% of its original forests. Vincent Florent says it's impossible to turn back the clock. Preserving what's left is hard enough. Biologists like him find the highland forest here the best place to do their research. This cleared area is in private hands. The forest was relatively well preserved in the first place, uh, but then very importantly, uh, the invasive alien plants have been removed. As you can see just behind here, dying tree there, this is an invasive plant and you can see it's been ring barked at the base. And if you look over there, you will see that this area is very dense because it's f still full of invasive alien plants. They have not yet been removed. When you remove them, you have a much more lighted place like we are in here. And as you look around you here, you see a lot of young plants growing. The forest start regenerating again. The scientists register every discovery and later analyze it in the lab. They're cataloging the unique biodiversity of Mauritius. It will take years before this forest area is completely freed of invasive plants. Time and again, they have to cut down non-endemic species, like this cinnamon tree. And the giant bats, known as flying foxes, are returning, the only mammals indigenous to the country. They're especially fond of eating the ripe fruits of the ebony tree, which is again growing here in increased numbers. They are more important now than they were before in the sense that they, um, they replace the role of the two other species that are gone extinct uh, uh, beyond their own role, which is disseminating uh, seeds of many trees, particularly the, 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 the very large species of trees in the forest. Invasive crab-eating macaques have been removed from these forests. They were destroying endemic plants and the broods of rare birds. This is where they used to be taken and kept in cages. Marianne and Owen Griffiths have made a business of breeding the macaques, known in laboratories as Sinomulgus monkeys, and selling them for animal experimentation abroad. The proceeds go to biodiversity protection. Our challenge is to help with government, with other NGOs, protect the remaining bits of land. And one way of doing it, as you've just alluded to, is buy up threatened areas and then put in a conservation program, which means removing the invasive alien species and helping restore the original forest. The company's macaques are used in research on Alzheimer's disease and on developing treatments for multiple sclerosis. The company also has a zoo. There's a rare giant tortoise nursery here, as adults, they're released into the wild. The Griffiths own more than 300 hectares of forest, which they're clearing of invasive species. Mauritius is number one in terms of saving endangered bird species. We've had five species of critically endangered bird that have been downgraded from critically endangered to endangered. That's an improvement. 
But is it right to sacrifice one animal to preserve many other species? On the internet and social media, opposition to the trade in monkeys from Mauritius is growing. Animal protectionists in Germany have joined the protest. In 2013, hundreds of laboratory macaques from Mauritius were imported to the country. This isn't about individual species. It's about the suffering of individual animals. These animals suffer terribly, especially once they're in the lab, when they're subjected to toxicity tests and when they're tortured to death. There's no way any benefit to other species can counterbalance that. Corinne Gericke considers the macaques that were introduced to Mauritius a part of the country's history and says there's no need to catch them or breed them for experimentation. If we use human cell cultures, there's no problem transferring results, because it's the same species. We can work with microchips, and of course, a lot can be tested directly on humans without harming them. At the University of Mauritius, Vincent Florence knows opinions are divided on the Griffiths model of species protection. But he says that without access to the forests, the research wouldn't be so productive. Mauritius is a bit of a, a, a precursor of what the world is going to, to, to go through because of the extent of habitat degradation here, a lot of extinction. We are ahead of the world in many ways. So studying uh, conservation in Mauritius gives us a bit of an advance notice of what's going to happen around the world. The flying foxes of Mauritius are returning to the primeval forests. They can find food there now, and they don't risk getting shot in the farmer's orchards.